Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host, David Tear. Today is my uh, fifth uh, video on uh, my practical math series. And today I'm going to talk about something called logarithmic stacking. Uh, I'll explain that in a minute. Anyway, let's begin. So you might wonder, uh, maybe you wondered this at some time in your life, how far can you extend the top card on a, a standard deck of playing cards? There's 52 uh, cards in a standard deck. And you might wonder how many how many deck lengths uh, you can you can extend the you know overhang the top card. And in this picture, it's not being overhung; it's just being kind of the deck is uh, made into a semicircle. But uh, and um, anyway, th there is a way to answer that question. It's called logarithmic stacking, and uh, it turns out the answer is about two point two six card widths, or I guess they call that the width. It's actually the length. It's the it's the long distance of the card. So, so uh, the formula is uh, it's a half times uh, the sum one plus one half plus one third up to one fifty first, uh, and that turns out to be approximately two point two six. And how do we get that formula? Well, um, let's look at uh, let's see what's going on here. So here we have a stack of blocks, which is basically the same idea. I mean, they're a lot thicker than cards, and you can't overhang them as much because we don't have as many. But it turns out, and what what you have to do here is let's look at that. Let's look at the top uh, block first. Notice that the top block is exactly balanced. It's, it's hung over as far as possible from the second one. the The key here is that um, the center of mass of uh, the top block can't be over the edge of the second block, otherwise it'll topple over. And that's true for every other block too. So in order to ensure, it's pretty easy to see that, in order to ensure that the center of mass of the top block uh, stays over the second block, the farthest you could overhang it is half a block length, right? Because once it's half a block length, then the, the edge of the second one is aligned with the center of the first one. And you could do the same thing for every other. Now, now for the... Uh, the second block, you can't overhang it as far. It turns out you can only overhang it a quarter of a block length. And the reason for that is now you have to ensure that the top two blocks are balanced along the edge of the third block. So the center of mass of the top two blocks can't be over the edge of the third block. And it turns out that the maximum possible overhang that will make that possible is a quarter of a block length. Similarly, uh, I don't want to derive this, but... Uh, the for the third for the first three blocks the possible the maximum overhang is a sixth and then an eighth and then a tenth it's always one over two times k in general where k is the uh, the number of uh, blocks on top of the k plus first blocks so by the time you're up to in this case I guess they show ten blocks in this uh, in this picture so the the farthest possible the the farthest possible overhang the top block. Is this one half times quantity one plus one half plus one third up to one ninth? There's a name for these numbers, by the way. Uh, some of the reciprocals of uh, integers up to some bound. That's called harmonic numbers. So anyway, here's the general formula. So if you want to find the maximum possible overhang of n cars or n blocks, whatever you're dealing with here. I mean, we started with cards, so let's consider cards. It turns out the formula is h n minus one. That's the n minus first harmonic number divided by two, and there's an asymptotic formula. So, so h n uh, I have a formula for it down here. It's just the sum of the reciprocals of all the numbers up to n, like I said. And uh, there's an asymptotic formula for it. It turns out that h n is approximately equal equal to the natural logarithm of n plus this constant called gamma, which is the euler mascheroni constant of approximately 0 0.5772. So that's the that's the formula we can use, or we could just calculate it exactly if n is not too large. But um, you can do this for any n. What I find kind of interesting here is that, the, the you know, if, if you let n go to infinity, this uh, series of the sums of reciprocals of the numbers up to n that's unbounded. It turns out that this series, known as the harmonic series, diverges. It's not obvious that it does, but it does. As a matter of fact, it grows logarithmically. That's why this problem is called logarithmic stacking, because uh, the, the nth harmonic uh, number is asymptotic to the natural logarithm of that plus this constant, which we don't really care about.
as n gets large. So um, you could extend if you had a, if you had an unlimited number of cards, you could you could overhang the top card as far as you want. But logarithms grow very very slowly, so you need a lot of cards. You know, if you wanted to overhang it like ten card lengths, you'd probably need more cards than the than the um, you know the number of atoms in the universe or something. So you can't extend it very far in practice, but in principle, you could extend it as far as you want. So uh, anyway, and uh, you know, just to get an idea how you derive the asymptotic formula I showed you, uh, and this is what's called the integral test. So we have this function. Now I'm sort of getting into calculus here. But for those of you who knew a little bit of calculus, uh, the natural logarithm is defined as the area under the uh, hyperbola y equals 1 over x. So if you go from 1 to 6, say they're showing this diagram, uh, the area under the uh, red curve from, from x equals 1 to x equals 6 is just the natural logarithm of 6, ln 6. And you can see that the uh, h5, that's just the sum of the reciprocals of numbers up to 5, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 quarter plus 1 fifth, that's a little bit bigger. And uh, this euler mascheroni constant is just the extra areas you get when you add up all the areas of these uh, of these bars, uh, the portion of the bars that's above the, the uh, hyperbola. That is a finite number, and it's called the euler mascheroni constant. It's about 0.5772. So that's how you get that. And uh, you can do even better. I mean, you know, this is a little bit beyond the scope of what I really want to talk about today, but this is an asymptotic formula for the nth harmonic number. So you can do better than LNN plus gamma. So, uh, you know, if you want it more precisely, it's LNN plus gamma plus 1 over 2n minus the series, which I'm not even going to talk about. But you can write it in as many terms of this series as you want. And therefore, you can uh, you can estimate the uh, nth harmonic number as precisely as you want. I just thought I'd show that to you in case you're interested. But anyway, that concludes my talk on logarithmic stacking. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you for watching, and long live math. And I'll see you next time.